Okay, this is the first video for the advanced instrument technique checkoff. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is hand signals for pickups. The surgeon will put their hand like this and they'll do this right here. That means they want forceps or pickups as they will call them. Next, if they want scissors and they don't say it, they'll do this right here. They'll do that with their fingers. And then for suture, they do their hand like this. That just means like how they're gonna throw the suture in the tissue, they do this right here. So that's what they mean if they do that with their hand, they want suture. Ringed instruments, they'll usually just put their palm out like this so that you can place the ring in their palm like this. And so that's how they'll, they'll just put their hand out like that. And that is all for the hand signals for for instrumentation. So now I'm going to have my assistant come up and we're gonna show you how to correctly pass METS, the METS and BALM scissors. So if the surgeon puts their hand out, I'm going to pass it like this with the curve where it's going to be pointing down in the patient. So I have it up, I'm up here on like the hinge area, pretend that's like the box lock area. So I have it like this and I'm placing it in their palm like that and then I'm letting go and they're going to be pointing. See how the tips are now pointed down in the patient. So now forceps, we're just gonna do debakies. If I'm passing forceps, I always grab it by the tip like this. So I'm gonna pick it up here and I just place it in their hand just like a pencil. That's how they're going to take their forceps, just like that and an army navy just to pass a retractor. Now this has two ends. You can do deeper or superficial. If we're working more superficial, I'm going to hold the working end. So you wanna pass it to your surgeon exactly how they're gonna use it. And I'm just gonna place it in their hand like that. And now they're ready to place it in. And that's the end that they want to use. And then for the blade, where you have a 15 blade loaded on a number three knife handle here, and there's the 15 blade. So I have it pointed away from my surgeon and my team. I'm just gonna pick it up like this from behind the blade. I'm not holding the blade, but I'm not holding too much on this part right here on the knife handle so that the surgeon can grab it. And they take it just like a pencil and I am up and away, just like that. And that's how the surgeon will take the blade, just like that. Okay, so now free ties. If the surgeon asks for a free tie, they will put their hand out two different ways. So I'm taking this off my mayo. They will either do their hand like that, and I would do, see how I have top and bottom? I go like that, and then their hand grasps on it, or they'll have their hand with their palm facing down, and you just go up like that. So again, it's either sideways, or up like that, and then you just let yes. go. And they would hold on to it. <laughs> yeah, that's okay, you thought I was gonna take it. There you go, and they have it, and then you just let go. And so that's what they would use for just a free tie. Free tie means it doesn't have anything attached to it, no instrument and no needle. It's just a tie by itself, hence the free tie. Now, stick tie, if they ask for a stick tie, that is, your, this is a silk suture, so it'd be a silk suture swedged on a suture needle. You're gonna load it just like you would regular suture. So I'm going to take my needle driver, and the way that I always do this is, how I remember, and this just helps me, I put my ring finger in the ring. So ring in the ring, my thumb here, I put my middle finger right there, and then my index finger to stabilize, and that will help you. I do the same thing with my suture scissors when I cut. So now I'm going right here. I'm going to grab it there and then pull it out. And then, so see how it's on the tip? It's not too close to the tip that's gonna fall out, but you'd never wanna have it down here in the middle of the jaws of your needle driver. So you have it just like that. And then you pull it out. And to pass this to your surgeon, you wanna pass it exactly like they are going to use it. You pass it with the sharp end of the suture needle facing their sternum when they have it in their hand. So just like this. So it's facing them and then they work with it just like that. And it is very subtle, but make sure that you don't pass it incorrectly. So if I passed it facing this way, that would be wrong. They can't use it. They would have to flip it. So it always has to be, remember, the sharp end facing their sternum or their heart, and that's how they are going to use it. So really pay attention. If they readjust it, then you need to pass it 
correctly the next time. So make sure that you are passing it and paying attention. Once you pass it, if they are having to adjust it at all, then that means you passed it incorrectly. If they adjust the needle at all, then that means they may want it more at an angle. So they'll open it up and maybe angle it like this a little bit. Never have it angled down like that. They can't use it that way. You can either have it straight on like this or angled a little bit like that. And you never want to grasp right here on the swedged end. That's the weakest part of the needle. So you always wanna come in at least one third. Some surgeons will tell you one half of the needle, just like that. And hear that click, I ratcheted it on on the needle driver. And then again, you pass it with the tail, the tail's behind her hand, and now that's exactly how she's going to be using that, that suture. Okay, and that is a stick tie. Think about, the easy way to remember this is this silk tie is attached to a needle. The needle will stick you. So if they say, if they say stick tie, they want it, they want the silk suture attached to a needle. So that would be a stick tie. So now we're going to go with tie on a passer. So I'm going to take my tonsil, my TNA, and I'm going to do, I'm going to add a free tie. So tie on a passer. It is attached to an instrument. They will most likely use a tonsil. So here we go. The way I do this is it's kind of a little bit hard to see on these dark gloves, but I put it between my index finger and my thumb. I stabilize the instrument on my middle finger so that way I can put it right where I need to and it's coming out of the tips of that instrument if it doesn't push it out. Oh, it's gonna push it out. It's pushing it out. There you go. So now it's coming out of the tip of the instrument just like that. And how you would pass that is you put it in their hand just like you would the ringed instrument. So that's how they are going to take it. And it's much easier if you stabilize it the way I did than especially when you're nervous, you try to go in like this and you're shaking. So I put it between my index and my thumb and then stabilize the instrument with my, ring, my middle finger and then grasp it just like that and you ratchet it in place and it comes directly from the tip of the instrument if it will focus. There it goes. Okay, it's coming directly from the tip of the instrument. Okay, so that is a tie on a passer. It is on an instrument to pass it. So don't get free tie, stick tie, and tie on a passer confused. Now a suture reel. So this will come, it can be silk, or this one is a chromic gut. This one was in alcohol. So if you open it too soon, the chromic will dry out. So you wanna wait to open this one until you're ready to use it. So with this, it's usually wound pretty tight. You have just a little bit, you just pull out just a little bit. And then when your surgeon needs it, you just pass it to them just like that. Just make sure you pull a little bit out so that way it doesn't get lost in the reel itself and your surgeon doesn't have to go looking for it. So pull just a little bit out, just like that. If you can see that. And then when you pass it to your surgeon, you just hand it to them just like that and they will use it that way. So that is the end of the first video.